Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. This is a kitchen step stool. And if you want to build this project, I'll have a link to the plans down in the description below. It's made out of solid cherry. It has a five degree angle on the sides, giving it kind of a modern or Japanese look through dovetails and a solid brace in the center, making the stool very strong. This stool is meant to get used, so it can be kind of a rustic build, which would be a perfect opportunity to practice those dovetails. I'm using an old cabinet top for this project and it's solid cherry, except for the plywood bump out on the one side. I'm using a straight line rip jig and the circular saw to cut off this piece of plywood. Now I've got a good straight edge on this side and I'm going to adjust the fence to 11 and 3 quarters to cut off that screw hole. And then I'll readjust the fence to 11 inches to cut off these biscuits. Now I can run the board through the planer to remove the old finish. Okay, well now this board is looking really nice. Some really nice figure in this board. And the funny thing is, this used to be the top. So I'll probably when I was building this, I made a mistake. Because you can obviously see the, the seam between the, the two boards on this side. But on this side, it's really difficult. So I must have done something uh, to, to not do the right thing. But regardless, I'm reusing the board now. And this time, I'm going to make this side the top. I want the grain to have the waterfall effect. So it'll go up one side, across the top, and then down. And the next step is to break out the crosscut sled. And this will be one side, this will be the top, and then this will be the other side. I'll cut the two sides first and I'll cut them just a little bit heavy. Then I'll set up a stop block and cut them both to their finished length of 10 and a quarter. Then I'll cross cut the top at 13 and a half. I want to take a minute and talk about this project's sponsor, Biloxygen. I use Biloxygen because it works. I use it in all my oil-based paints and finishes, polyurethanes, and even oil-based fills. The heavy argon gas in Biloxygen will blanket, blanket the finish and force any oxygen in the can out. That will keep your finish from skinning over, thickening, and going bad. So the way to use it is when you're ready to put your paint can away or your finish, just open up the lid a little bit, put the straw inside the can and hold the button down for two full seconds. That's 1001, 1002. Then close the lid. Now the heavy gas is sitting on that finish and keeping your finish from skinning over, thickening and going bad. So it really works and that's why I use it. If you wanna learn more about Biloxygen, Click on the link in the description below. I'm using the table saw to cut the dovetails and I'll be using this jig. I just posted a video last week on how to make this jig. If you didn't see it, I'll have a link in the description below. Definitely makes cutting dovetails a little bit easier. What I need to do is get the seven degree angle that is on this jig on to my sliding T-bevel here so I can mark out where the dovetails will be at the top of the stool. And to do that, I'm just using a block of wood to prop the T-bevel away from the fence and aligning the metal edge of the T-bevel with the kerf that's in my crosscut sled. And now I can bring the T-bevel over to the top of the stool and mark out for the dovetails. With the good side of the board facing out, I'll use the T-bevel and I'm basically just using half of the piece of metal here for my first pin. Then I'll flip it over and trace it again. This time I'm using both pieces. Then I'll come back and again only use the half. And I just repeat that until I get close to the middle and I'll have a smaller pin in the middle. That's fine by me. I don't mind if the pins are not all exactly the same. 
I think it makes things look a little bit more interesting when the pins are different. Once I get close to the center, I'll come to the other side and repeat the process. Half pin, both pieces of metal, half, both again. And now you can see I'm going to have a smaller pin in the very center right here. So I've got three that are the same size on this side and three that are the same size on this side. Now what I need to do is mark here and remove this waste. I'm using one of the cutoff pieces to scribe a line the same thickness as the material and also that will prevent any tear out when I'm cutting the joint. Now I'll set the blade height to the same thickness as the wood and make the first cut at the line using the right side of the jig. After making that first cut at each line, I'll go back and remove half of the material. Now I can readjust the jig, make the first cut at the line, and then cut away the rest of the material. Here are the three parts that will make up the stool. I've labeled them one, two, and three, and put an underline under the number to make sure that they're in the right position and I don't accidentally flip them like this. I've already cut out the space for the pins on this one, which creates the tails. And when I do that on the number three spot, I want to make sure that the number three is facing out. So I'm going to take it like this, flip it. I'll bring the number two, which is the top of the step stool. Make sure that I'm flush in the front and then use a sharp pencil and trace the pins. I'm flush at the sides and in the front and I'm using a clamp to help hold the parts in place. Now I'm going to use the bandsaw to make this cut and I'm going to take most of the pencil line and I'll stop at this scribe mark. Now I've replaced the jig with just a straight piece of plywood. And again, I'm going to use the table saw to plow out most of the material in between the cuts made by the bandsaw. Then I'll go back to the bandsaw and finish it off. I've set up a fence on the bandsaw, and now I'll finish the cuts. Okay, well now I can go ahead and see how this fits. Hmm. There we go. And that's, that's pretty good. Maybe a little sanding. Nope, looks pretty good. I did screw up though. I hit the top of the tail with a bandsaw here and the side of the tail with a bandsaw here. It's always harder to make these cuts when you're doing it on camera. But again, this is just a, a good practice piece. It's a, it's a kitchen stool, so it's going to get beat up. Before I put this together, I do want to do a few more things. I want to cut a half moon shape at the bottom. A little slot at the top for a handle and I am considering tapering the 
the leg from the top down to zero, like so maybe like a five degree angle. That means I'm going to have to cut into this tail. And I'm not sure I want to do that, but it might be worth it. I think it's, instead of looking like just such a simple little box, it might give it some style. I decided to go with the five degree angle, and that's what it turned out to be, a five degree angle. So I'm going to cut that before I cut this half moon shape so I have some more support against the fence. And this saw does have a laser, which I very rarely use, but in this case it happens to be very helpful because I've turned the laser on, set the fence at five degrees, and I can see exactly where the blade is going to cut. And it's right there at zero at the bottom, and it kind of splits this tail right in half. Now I have two choices. I can cut that same five degree angle along the top and I'll just trace these lines and then connect them and cut, make that cut with the table saw. Or the bandsaw is still set up with the fence. I can cut this off first and see how that looks and maybe just cut a, a small five degree angle on the front edge here or maybe just a round over. I figured that I would just cut that tail off first and add the round over because that way I can see how it looked. I can always make it smaller, but I'm not going to be able to add that tail. So uh, I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it just the way it is as far as that's concerned. And now I am going to cut the half moon shape in the bottom and I'm going to add some bracing at the very top here for some added strength. I have this pattern from another stool that I made a few years ago and I'll trace this and when I cut it out I'll leave the line and then use the pattern to clean the cut up with a flush cut fit in the router. Okay, well, I think this is looking pretty good. It's kind of a Japanese meets shaker inspired type of a design. I decided not to add a slot or a finger hole in the center. I do want to add a little bit more strength though, so I've got a piece of sapili here, and I'll add that to the bottom simply by screwing through this board into the, the top of the, the stool and into the two sides. After cutting the brace to length, I'll pre-drill and countersink two holes about three inches from each side. Next, I'll pre-drill and countersink a hole on each side of the stool to attach the sides to the brace. I've sanded the inside of all the parts and now I'm getting ready for the glue up. And the first part I'm going to attach is this brace in the center. I've got the brace clamped in place, making sure that I'm flush on both ends, and I'll attach it with two screws. After gluing the parts together, I used a few clamps to close up any gaps and let the glue set up overnight. The 
following day, I filled the screw holes with wooden plugs and drilled finger holes two and a quarter inches in from each side. Okay, well, I'm real happy with the way this project turned out. I think it's a pretty classy little step stool that would look good in any home and not a big time or material investment. So a great project for practicing these dovetails. And you could definitely change this design. You could bring it up to 17 inches, make it a little wider, and that would be a really nice looking bench and something that I might do. And just like every project, this project didn't go completely smooth. And I don't go into them when I'm shooting the video because it just takes too much time. But on my second channel, I'm gonna talk about some of the problems I had, some of the mistakes I made, and it's just some of the things that I had to deal with using the, the old board, using the old cabinet top to make this project. So if you are going to build it, you probably wanna check out that video. It'll give you a little bit more insight before you start cutting the wood for your project. So as always, thanks for tuning in. And if you want to check out that video, click on the link in the description below and that'll bring you to my second channel. Have a great day.